Hello, Jared Borkowski here from soundguitarlessons.com. This is my first video of 2024. So if you're watching this roughly when it comes out, happy new year to you. Hope you had a wonderful holiday season and a great wrap up to the previous year. Hope you've been a little bit reflective about how the last year went and what you want out of the next year. And that's exactly what I want to do together in this video in the realm of music and our goals with uh, being musicians and guitarists. I want to ask us some questions that will help us refine our artistic vision and specifically our voice um, as someone that has music in our lives. And when I say our voice, I don't just mean how we sound, but everything about how we interact with music and why we do it and uh, you know what we're going to prioritize over other things, which of course the end result of all of that is how we end up sounding. So let's go through these five questions. Um, I'll answer them as we go along. And if we answer them honestly, I think it will give us some nice clarity to what we want out of this year as musicians. Um, let's dive into it. Question number one, what do I love most about playing and practicing music? Pretty simple, straightforward question for the first one. The answer seems like it should be easy, but we just want to ask ourselves this. You don't have to say everything you love about music, but what do you love most? What are one or two things? When we ask ourselves this kind of question, sometimes the first answers are not actually honest answers, okay? So for me, my answer, uh, the very top of the list is that this is basically reflect, my music time, my practice time is basically reflective time. It's this kind of turning inward uh, time that I, helps me understand myself better. And so this is kind of meditative or the kind of clarity you get from taking a long walk and thinking about things or taking a bath for an hour and just thinking or journaling, you know, writing and, and trying to figure things out that are, you're processing. And you're, for me, it feels like processing and clarity. And I feel very comforted and at peace when, I, when I'm doing this. So this is why I talk, if you've seen many of my other videos, I'm all about kind of the journey and the the practice and being in it for the long game because just being in it just doing it just showing up for it for me is already so extremely rewarding um and that's one that's one of my top things is just how it feels when i'm there doing it much like if you are a reader and just curling up with a book like less about what you're reading and wanting some knowledge more just like, wow, this feeling of curling up with a book and just reading is just so nourishing and comforting. That's, that's for me, one of the top things on the list for why I um, like having music in my life. And I like the intellectual stimulation and the challenge and to, none of what I practice comes easily to me, which is why I think I teach the way that I do. Step one, step two, step three, because that's how I have to learn it myself. It's not just something I can do. You know, there's a lot of things I like about it. Somebody else, their top answer might be, Maybe for you, it helps you connect with people, right? Maybe you're playing music with people in your family, in your life, your friends. You like to get out in the world and music is a bridge to, you know, this, to a community connection of some kind. A lot of people play at their church or, you know, various um, events. And that's a wonderful reason. Um, but those are really different reasons. Mine is this all the way kind of in, in an introverted world thing. And, and the other one can be very extroverted world. And there's everything and anything in between, and there's no wrong answers. But those are really different approaches to, you know, what our outcomes might end up being or what our, what our goals might end up being, which informs what we should practice, which is coming up in the next um, questions. So what do you love most about playing and practicing music? Answer that really honestly. Let's move on to question number two. This one is, is great. I like to try to challenge things wherever I can. Question number two. What assumptions do you or others have about what it means to be a musician that are not true for you? Okay, so what assumptions exist in the world? I said, what assumptions do you or others have? But really, you can think of it as like, what, what do people expect of me when they realize, when they hear that I play guitar, that I'm a musician, that maybe isn't true for me? There's a ton of stuff like this. I've experienced it for myself and with a lot of students, this has come up because what I tend to practice and teach is the nuts and bolts of music, how it works, improvising, theory, you know, stuff that we can practice hours and hours every day if we wanted to, and still not have a handful of songs that you can just play someone to entertain them. And I think we are conditioned to believe that that is a bad thing. Like, oh, I've been playing so much, I've been practicing so much, but I don't just have a song I can play. Well, is that really a bad thing? If you want that, that's fine. Practice that. I like having that too. 
but it's not it's not a given that that's what we're supposed to do and provide for people as a musician but especially non-musicians they do have this assumption oh you play guitar great what songs do you know or oh you play guitar awesome can you come along you know bring your guitar and and we'll all sing along uh with whatever songs that that you can play or um you know great play us a song um but a lot of guitarists are like oh but i don't really have something i can just perform right now even though i practice every day even though i'm really 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 into this and so that's one of these assumptions that's out there that uh, maybe doesn't apply to us and remember that somebody can have 50 songs ready to go. And from the outside world, they might see this person as advanced and very experienced, and, and they might be, but that person might not also, they also might not understand how any of the songs work or the theory of them or know how to transpose them into other keys or know different voicings for the chords or how to improvise or how to um, compose over them or make their own music, right? So, okay, they can play all these songs when you snap your finger, but do they have these kind of internal skills that a lot of us, if you're watching my channel, then you probably are interested in these, you know, really the functionality of how music works so we can have control over it for ourselves for creativity. So that's just one example. What assumptions do you or others have about what it means to be a musician that aren't true for you? One more for me, one of my answers is that people assume, this is back to me exposing myself as an extreme introvert, People assume that I'm a musician, so therefore I want to go jam. Therefore I want to have gigs, and therefore I want to go out and like check out music at bars or, or go uh, play, play shows and like be out multiple nights a week. Maybe not everybody thinks that. It depends on the kind of musician you are or what kind of music you like, but there is this assumption from some people who, who think, oh, sweet, you play music. Awesome. Like you, you must, like, can you play? this night or this night, or can you do this thing? Or, Hey, I have the, you know, can you open for this band? Or there's this jam session, you must like want to come to it. And that stuff can all be exciting and stimulating. And I've done all of that, but it's not my, it's not my bread and butter. It's not my home base. It's not where I'm most comfortable. I'm much more comfortable again, l looking inward rather than um, externally. It just, it drains me to do that external stuff. And it gives me a lot of energy to do my kind of internal uh, creative work. So that's, an, that's one of those assumptions. So ask yourself that question, you know, what is maybe not true for you? Because sometimes these can be just feelings that we have that make us feel bad. It makes us feel bad that someone thought we're supposed to be able to play a song when we don't know a song or that someone thought that I, you know, that you would want to come to the jam session when it's, when it's really something you kind of don't want to do or whatever other assumptions, um, there might be, um, one more that comes to mind, if someone says, oh, you're a musician and they can, they assume you can read sheet music, but maybe you can't read sheet music, or maybe you're a classical musician and they assume you can jam, but you can't jam, even though you can read sheet music. So there's a lot of stuff like that. Um, that's one of our questions that's going to help us find ourselves and be okay with ourselves and have an answer to those things that, that, you know, to have confidence, to have confidence with, with ourself. Question number three. Uh, what does a perfect day look like for you? In other words, how do you want to spend your time, right? Not, it's not like every day has to be this, but like, imagine like the perfect day where you get to work on music, the perfect, like, or the perfect day where music is baked into it in kind of a routine way. What does that look like for you? I love this question because it's asking us how we want to spend our time and not what results we want. Right. So somebody might say, I want to be the rippinest guitarist out there. I want to shred. I want to sound so good. And I want to have, you know, I want to play on stage and just be pu putting people into a state of awe with my shredding guitar playing. But if they think about how they want to spend their time, they're, they're not excited about the vision of actually practicing a ton. Well, if you don't want to spend your time practicing a ton, if you don't love that part of the process, there's no way you're going to get to that end goal result. Or if you do, it's just going to be miserable working towards it for a, a specific outcome. So I'm always talking about focusing on the journey, focusing on the system that we want, the thing that we can repeat over and over again, that inevitably gets you to the thing that is a great outcome. But of course, by the time you get there, you don't care because you're just in it for the day to day, how you exist musically. Hopefully that makes some sense. I've talked about this kind of stuff on the channel before, if you're someone that has watched um, some of my other videos. So what does that perfect day look like and how do you want to spend your time? 
Um, that I think is the thing to focus on more than anything else. And then think, well, what does that lead to? Or if I do want an outcome, how can I, you know, what's something I would love to do every day that would lead to that outcome? Okay. So for me, how would like to spend my time? I would love to spend a couple hours practicing and I would love to spend time after that composing. So practicing and composing or practicing and writing. And uh, I should just say creating, right? I love the practicing, but I want it to be for the purpose of honing my skills to have this ability to communicate with music fluently so I can create as swiftly and easily as possible so I can translate thoughts, ideas, emotions into something that is uh, creatively satisfying. So I want to write music based on, and I want to practice to have the skills to write music. And when I'm practicing, I like learning other songs and analyzing them and stuff. But all of that for me personally is about um, having the tools and knowledge to create with it. So my ideal day is practicing and then creating, which is writing, composing, and recording, actually getting something, turning, turning nothing into something, right? Having an idea that, that has an outcome into a piece of work. That's my ideal thing. So, and that's kind of it. Not that I wouldn't do other things, but when I think of my ideal day, it's not that, oh, I spend some time practicing and then I go jam at night, right? Which I've already covered how that's not my kind of in game uh, thing. Yeah, you know, I like to hang out with people. Don't get me wrong. And I like to play, you know, I like to play music with people, but it's just not the main thing for me. It's totally this side dish. Question number four, what is your ideal outcome five years from now? So now we're thinking about the outcome, right? But we're thinking way, way, way out. If you're thinking and put any number there, if you want to say one year, that's fine. Five years, 10 years. Um, you know, for me, I'm turning 40. Um, in whatever day this is publishing anyway, in like two weeks. So I could say, well, what, what would my ideal outcome be 20 years from now when I turn, when I'm 60. And so I just, any, any amount of time into the future, what is your ideal outcome musically, guitar wise, artistically, you know, that kind of thing. So when I answer, and, and so for you, that might be like, oh, I'm so good that I can just jam with anyone. Right. And so I'm giving these examples that are, that are contrasting to what I'm sharing about myself here. That you want, do you want to go jam? Do you want to have an album recorded? Do you want to uh, be playing, uh, performing in shows? Or do you just want to be someone that is having music in your life and practicing and maybe has something ready to play for your family? Maybe you just want to understand music so well. So when you listen to it, you appreciate better. There is no wrong answer to any of these things. That's why it's so important that we ask ourselves questions. So important. Otherwise, the automatic answers that are these assumptions out in the world are going to become our answers that we impose onto ourselves and it uh, crushes down this level of fulfillment that we have poten potential for. So what is your ideal outcome five years from now? My answer would be one, that I'm doing the thing that I talked about in the last answer, which is having room in my life to practice and, and create every day. But on top of that, that because of that routine, I have a body of work that I feel proud of a body of work of songs that I've released that um, I believe, you know, and that could just say it that way, but I think doing that, it's more of this introspection thing for me. I feel like I learn about myself when I create. Uh, and by learning about myself, I feel like I learn about other people and how the world works and, you know, the human condition, if you will. So my goal would be to be doing this routine and having a body of work that I'm proud of that is continuing to build. Um, that I can point to and, and look at for myself, kind of like reading your old journal entries or looking through a scrapbook of pictures from vacations where you're like, oh, that's how I was at that point. I love that about the creating. That's why I like to do it. Um, last question. Let's go on to question number five. And just to reiterate that last one is what's your ideal outcome five years from now? So question number five, okay, here's where it ties all together. This is, this is basically a podcast episode, by the way, right? Um, this is my side thought here. People tell me I talk too much all the time. I am trying to get better at that for the lessons that need to be, you know, demonstrating on the guitar. This is obviously a format where I'm letting myself lean into that more, right? So feel free to tell me if you if you find this um, appealing, interesting, helpful, or that I'm just talking too much and I should get back to um, teaching 
how to play songs <laughs> or something like that. Any kind of feedback is great. I always appreciate it. Um, I don't take it personally if you have uh, critical feedback. Um, and if it's positive feedback, that helps me know that it's something that's helpful. So question number five drives it all home for us. What are you going to do differently after having answered those questions? So if we answer those questions and or if we ask ourselves questions that are challenging and we're honest, we're honest about our answers, um, the point of doing that is to highlight somewhere where there's a mismatch of what we think we want or what we do want versus what we're doing to get there, right? So if someone says, I want to practice every day and I want to have all those skills and I want to shred on the stage like I talked about, but then they're, they're really not actually putting in pr consistent practice time. This is just a very surface level, easy example. Then they need to figure out how to change that unless they're lying to themselves about what they want, right? So let's really think about given the answers to our four questions so far, what do we need to do differently? Okay. So my answer, and this maybe comes, this maybe has crossed your mind because I am emphasizing this creative process for myself and I'm emphasizing how important it is to me to practice music. So I have the skills to create, and then I want to create so I can learn about myself in the process and have this scrapbook of body of work of music that I can look at and look back at and see uh, something that I've built. Yet, I don't have that. I do have a lot of music I've played. I've played in a lot of bands. I do have a lot of recordings from various groups, projects, stuff that I sometimes look back on, but none of it was truly me. None of it was truly what, you know, purely what I can find inside myself to create with um, and use all these things that I've learned in practice to, you know, try to create some art with. So when, when I answer these questions and it's this new year right now, and I'm about to turn 40, which is, you know, a, a classic um, middle of the road moment in life to think about what the hell am I doing? Um, my answer is really obvious that I need to be doubling down on that creative part of it. Cause I do practice a lot and I love to, and I love to share it. And I love to teach it. Um, and I didn't add that into my ideal day. My ideal day would include, you know, sharing, teaching, putting it out. This is so baked into my life that I, I didn't even think of it that way. I just do this. But um, yes. So for me, it's obvious that I need to apply what I work on into creative output and prioritize that in a huge, 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 huge way. Okay. That is what I know I will get fulfillment out of. I've always wanted to have that be what I do, but I've just, it's an easy thing to drag your feet on. Right? So what are you dragging your feet on? Or what do you have clarity on now from answering these questions that you might need to do differently? Right? Does that mean output? Like you want to record an album or you want to arrange some songs or you want to finally jam with people if you do want to jam and you have been too scared to go to the session or meet with your friends? Or is it just that you need to practice more consistently? Is it that you want to, um, you know, you realize what the style of music is that is truly you and you can ignore the other stuff? I'm so interested in this because there's no right answer. And that's also why it's insanely difficult to figure out. And then this, of course, guides what we practice and what we work on. And it, it leads to the level of fulfillment that is possible, which is this infinite potential for how amazing it can feel, but only if we have clarity on what we actually want out of it. So I want to hear, I would love to hear what any of your answers are from this. Uh, if you go to, if you're watching this on YouTube or go to the YouTube uh, post of this lesson of this, I guess it's not a lesson, but my, <laughs> my, uh, our, our reflection session here, um, share with us anything you want out of this. What's an outcome you got from it? What's this answer to number five? Like, oh, dang, I realized that I need to be doing this or all your answers or whatever, so we can learn from each other because this is not easy to figure out. And the more we see that other people are doing what's right for them and going against the grain of what the assumptions are that people should be doing, the easier it is for us to, to find our own path. Okay. So that would be awesome to, to hear from you, um, in the comments and, uh, check out what other people are saying there. Uh, and I always give away, uh, you know, something, one of my PDF downloads in my lessons. So the one that feels appropriate for this lesson is honestly just my technique, um, PDF. This is the, the best guitar warm up 
I, I call it the, the best technique exercise on guitar. I do it literally every day. I, I play this uh, technique exercise as my warm up because it uses every finger combination. I do it with um, regular articulation with the picking hand, and then I do different uh, articulation versions like slurring with it and stuff like that. The reason it's appropriate here is because no matter what we do, what we want to do, what our outcome is as guitarists, if we're playing guitar, technique is going to be in the way. It's always going to be something that we need to do to play anything we want to play. And this uh, one exercise, just I rely on it so heavily to keep my um, technique nice and fit. So uh, if you want to grab that, there's a link to it in the top of the description. It's very straightforward. And I have a video about it as well that shows how to work on it. Uh, so uh, free little PDF for you if you want that. That's it for this video. It is a long one. Like I said, kind of a podcast episode. Um, if you didn't like this or did like this or any feedback about this format of video, please let me know. If it is valuable for people, I love doing this kind of thing, as you can tell, um, and would like to mix some more of it in and maybe even have a podcast feed of these kinds of videos, which maybe would do one a month or something like that on top of the uh, guitar, tangible guitar lesson stuff. So... That's it. I am here every Tuesday with a new video and uh, hope to see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and happy practicing.